Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today's card has got that gorgeous metallic finish in a copper with it. We're going to make a 4x4 four four card today using a gray granite base and that absolutely beautiful metallic paper from the Joyous Noel Designer Series paper. I'm going to give you a tip about using the foil two different ways. If you're here visiting from YouTube, you'll find a link down in the video description below which will lead you to the pictures, cutting dimensions, and supplies for today's project. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started. Here's the card that we're going to be making today. Isn't this stunning? That little bit of copper in that designer series paper is absolutely beautiful. That all comes from the Joyous Noel designer series paper, and that's all part of the holiday catalog. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and are interested in purchasing Stampin' Up! supplies, I would be more than happy to send you a complimentary copy of the holiday catalog and or the annual catalog. Just leave me a comment below. I've cut a piece of gray granite cardstock. This is four and a quarter by eight and a half. I've got a piece of Whisper White cardstock and that designer series paper. And I'm gonna start by adhering these together. I'm gonna work in those four corners. The designer series paper in the stack is double-sided. Like most of the papers with Stampin' Up! The great thing is that you have options on how you'd like to use them. So go ahead and mount that here. And then I'm gonna flip this over as well. I'm going to add adhesive to the back side. I'm using snail adhesive. It's my adhesive of choice. 472 inches comes inside the cartridge and it's refillable for just $4.50. Very economical and super easy to use. I'm going to be using the Detailed Deer Thinlets. This is all part of the same suite of products with the Dashing Deer stamp set. You can see that this image does have a die cut for it as well, but we're actually going to be using an additional die. This beautiful flying reindeer and those intricate antlers are going to make a stunning focal point. Let's get the Big Shot out and let's die cut using some foil. I've got my Big Shot here with my magnetic platform. That's my platform of choice when I'm using the metal dies. I'm going to put a clear cutting mat over the top to protect it. And I've got a piece here of the copper foil. This die particularly is solid, so I don't have to worry about any of the etching from my plates transferring to the foil, but I want to give you a tip while we're together. Inside the detailed deer thinlets, there's another reindeer image that is actually open on the inside. If I were to die cut this image and I placed my other clear mat over the top, that wear can transfer to the foil, making this image look scratched. So my tip for you would be to take a piece of white computer paper and place it over your foil to protect it. And then when you put your other clear mat over the top to crank it through, you don't have to worry about these impressions transferring to the foil and then ruining that beautiful shiny finish. Since this die is solid, we don't have that concern. So I'm going to go ahead and lay that die on top of here. And because this is a lot bigger piece that I'm going to need, I'm actually going to protect that end of that foil so that I can use it on another project. I'm going to put this over the top and I'm going to crank this through. Every Big Shot is a little bit different and all the rollers inside work a little bit differently. So I know my Big Shot's going to need to be cranked there and it's going to need to be cranked back. It's going to need two passes primarily because of the detail in those antlers. Flip it over and take a good look at it. You should be able to see all the die cut areas, especially here in that detailed section in the center before you unassemble this. I've got my Big Shot die brush here. I keep it in a paper pumpkin box. I just use half of the box for storage. It fits perfectly. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the bristles of my brush to help loosen up that antler area where the die has become embedded in the foil. So I'm just going to rub back and forth to help loosen it up through those small holes. Now that I have my reindeer ready, my next step is going to be embossing this deer. I want to give him a little bit of texture. So I'm going to slide him inside the swirls and curls embossing folder. I'm going to put another clear mat and I've switched out my platform now to the Big Shot regular basic platform. So I've got a clear mat here. I've got my folder with my reindeer here and another clear mat over the top to protect it. And then we'll go ahead and crank that through as well. But look at the gorgeous texture this impression receives from this embossing folder. That's going to make our card really stand out. 
My next step is going to be it to adhere my reindeer to my card. So I'm going to use mini dimensionals in the large area and then I'm going to use tiny bits of liquid glue on the antlers. Originally when I designed this card, I was going to glue the whole thing down, but I wanted a little bit more dimension. So you certainly could use glue. So I'm going to show you how you can do this another way. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to bring in my silicone craft sheet because we're going to end up using that as well for the glue. But let's start with the mini dimensionals. And I'd like to use the paper piercing attachment on my pickup tool. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up some of those. I want to make sure that this is going to hold up through the postage machine at the post office. This area here on the hind quarter is going to need a piece that's a little bit smaller. So I'm going to give you another tip. Go ahead and take your scissors. And while these mini dimensionals are on the paper, go ahead and cut them in half. That's going to make them a smaller size for you, making them perfect for those little tighter fit areas. I'm going to ready this by taking off those paper backings. Once those backings are off, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of liquid glue here to the legs and to the antlers. I want to make sure as I'm putting it in the envelope and it comes out of the envelope that nothing's going to get ruined. I'd like to start my glue here off on the side of my silicone craft sheet. Glue and adhesive and even hot glue will not stick to this. Once this dries, I'll be able to rub that right off. So this makes this a perfect work surface and it keeps your other areas sticky free. So I'm going to use that tip to actually pick up some of that. I'm going to put a couple little drops on here. The one thing about the liquid glue is it's very, very strong. So I don't need a whole bunch and I don't need to put it everywhere. It's going to help tack it down. Now I'm going to do the same thing down here on his legs. I'm using that dimensional to help me pick it up because it's nice and sticky. And then I'll flip this over and then I'll position this on my card base where I'd like it. And then I'll tack that down. And then I'll give that about a minute to dry. And while it's doing that, let's go ahead and let's work on the greeting. I have a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock here and I'm using the coordinating gray granite ink pad. And I've pulled out from the exact same stamp set the greeting that says, remembering you this season with warm thoughts and a wish for everything merry. I decided I only wanted part of this greeting. Go ahead and ink it up and then stamp it on your scratch paper. I'm going to come in with my scissors now and I'm going to work just alongside the remembering you this season. That's the only part of the greeting that I'm going to want to use on my card today. So I'm just going to cut away what I don't want. This is a great way for you to be able to use just portions of your greetings for your cards. I'll bring back in my silicone craft sheet so it'll be a little bit easier for you to see. And I'm going to use mini dimensionals on the back of this as well just for some added elevation on my card. And I'm going to mount my greeting down here near the bottom. I'm looking to make sure that my greeting edge is flush with the paper. And then we'll go ahead and tack that in place. Now, originally, I was concerned that this would be slightly elevated from the mini dimensionals, and this wasn't. But you know what? It's turned out extremely well. This is the card we created today. This is the one I created before you join me. And remember the silicone craft sheet with the glue? Well, this is almost dry, but as it dries, I'm just going to be able to rub this right off. This is a great accessory for your craft room. And if you have a craft lover amongst your family and friends, this would make a great stocking stuffer this holiday season. You'll be able to find the silicone craft sheet and the supplies used on today's card in my online store. You'll find the link below. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.